Good morning, um, Kev from Leeds Harmonica. I think this is number six in this series of uh, Life, Love... What is it? Love, Life and Blues Harmonica Leeds? I can't even remember what I've called it. Um, what I wanted to share today... It, it's sad news, really, but I actually feel quite good about it anyway. Um, the duo that I play in uh, with my friend Chris called the High Hollers uh, we've been sort of an acoustic roots blues duo since around 2008, I think. So a long time. And, you know, we just play around leads and whatnot. Um, but we've decided to stick the project on indefinite hiatus, I think is the uh, euphemism we're using. Um, mainly because we're just finding it impossible to get together. Um, and spend time together, you know, if we were spending an, an hour a fortnight practicing we were doing quite well and that is not, that's not enough, right? We were, the last time we were together we were so rusty um, and we were um, in fact going to prepare for a small gig up at uh, locally here um, but we, in the end, we just thought, you know what, this just isn't worth it, let's just pull out while we still can and um, Rather than go and do the gig and be rubbish, uh, nobody wants that. Um, but we haven't had an argument or anything, everything's pretty cool. I actually feel quite liberated in a way because it's one less thing I have to worry about. Um, maybe I'll get back on to doing a little bit more solo stuff, playing guitar and whatnot, if the mood takes me. Um, yeah, so it is, it's strange when bands break up. You, um, something you've put a lot of effort and time and emotional investment into um, when that disappears it's kind of it it does leave a gap it does leave a gap um, and it would be easy to get despondent about it but I'm actually feeling fairly confident that we did the right thing um, we never really recovered from lockdown it was Covid that killed us killed us off really um, so yeah, you've got to, you've got to roll with it, man. Um, maybe I'll find someone else to play with. Um, it's a new, a new chapter, um, and we do have. Don't tell anyone. We do have a sneaky idea for a project, maybe a couple of years down the road, which will be different from the high haulers, but hopefully interesting. But anyway, I'm not going to say anything about that now. Um, yeah. So I guess I guess what I'm saying is, don't sweat it. Um, everything's an opportunity. All right, I'm not worrying about practicing for the high hollers anymore. That frees up a little bit of time for me, and I can put that time to some other positive use, <laughs> or I can just completely waste it out of my ass. But I'll try to put it to some positive use. Anyway, enough waffling. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you're a musician, you play with people, bands come and go. Um, you're dealing with different personalities, people with different uh, schedules, different life expectations, different demands on their time, all that stuff. So, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, all that aside, um, I've got uh, an interesting lick to share today and it's a little Walter one which I think I might end up regretting. Okay, so I need to get my head examined for trying to introduce or trying to play a little Walter lick here I guess. Um, there is so much going on with little Walter's playing. The more you dig in the more you find. Um, so if uh, anyone smarter and more uh, knowledgeable or experienced than me wants to come and tell me I'm doing this wrong, then uh, fine, whatever. But at its core, this lick is quite simple. There's a couple of tricky bits. Okay, so all we're doing is we're going one, two, three, four, one. two or one two and three doing a half step bend on the three draw 
and then the three draw natural. Um, I'm actually trying to get a little bit above that half step bend, so somewhere between the natural and the half step bend because that's where it sounds really good. Um, the trick to this is in the timing. So the lick actually starts in the count of the song, the lick starts, if it's, uh, excuse me, we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The lick actually starts on the and of one. So it's one and two and three and four and one and, that's when the lick starts. One and two and three and four and one lick. Okay, which is um, tricky if you're not used to um, thinking about the space between the beats. But that's where the syncopation is, that's where a lot of bluesy stuff come, comes from. Um, so I am going to do what I always do here, I'm going to put a jam track on. We've got the MCCD sessions, Jump Blues in D. Uh, it's a second position lick, so I've got a G harmonica here. And uh, we will see what I can do with this. So, oh, I should mention that um, the lick is from the head of Thunderbird. I think it's Thunderbird. Little Walter's Thunderbird. Um, and it, Walter actually does some very, very smart stuff with uh, bending and matching the chord changes on that chorus. All of which I'm going to completely ignore today. It's a subject for another time. But the... Uh, the first chorus of Thunderbird is, uh, it sounds deceptively simple, but uh, there's really a lot going on there when you uh, start analysing it. Anyway, this isn't about that, this is just this little... So, Jump Blues in D. Um, obviously I will link the jam track I'm using, it's on YouTube from MCCD Sessions. And let's see if I can make a mess of this. Oops. Ha. 
tried with that lick to jam in that way before so um, yeah, yeah that's what happens it was fairly successful um, I could certainly have put a bit more interesting stuff in there if my brain was firing a bit quicker or if I'd had a bit more practice but um, anyway uh, I hope you enjoy and maybe I'll talk about it another time but uh, the first chorus of Thunderbird really is uh, worth digging into cool have fun I'll see you soon <laughs> 